Hey guys, I am on the float wheel ADV2 and I want to talk about the BMS and BMS pushback and those features. One of the features that is advertised for the ADV2 is BMS based pushback. And that is a feature that we've wanted for a long time. Okay, so I realize I probably need to explain why we've wanted this feature. Ever since we've had VESC vehicles, we've always had the ability to get pushback based on low battery, high battery, and so on. So if the battery is getting overcharged, we get notified. If the battery is getting low, we can get pushback. And so we've had that functionality all along. What we have not had is the ability to react to events from the BMS. And when I say we haven't had that, we have had BMS or smart BMSs with cell level information provided to the controller now for well over a year. It was started with the x Lite from Enoid. Now Fungineers has a BMS as well. And the ADV2 includes similar functionality too. But the part that we haven't had is actual support in the package to give us tilt back based on that information from the smart BMS. And this is something that has been added very recently by a few guys in the community. So this is what's new. Basically what we're getting in addition to what we've always had is the ability to react to individual cells getting low. So if there is a huge imbalance or one of the cells suddenly dies, your total voltage might still be perfectly fine, but that cell, the damaged cell or the compromised cell is still being used and you wouldn't know it without the information from the smart BMS. So BMS pushback allows us to give you pushback if just a single cell is crazy low or crazy high. And I also need to say, because I know people will react to that when I show them the configuration that I'm using, is we, while we're riding, the acceptable cell voltages are very different to the acceptable voltages when charging. So when you're charging, you definitely don't want your cells to be above 4.2 volts. And you also don't want to allow charging when the cells are anywhere below 2.5. But during riding, you have voltage sag and you have the opposite of that when the voltage increases because you're braking or you're going downhill. So you might have a cell at 4.1 volts and then you're braking really hard that cell might sag, reverse sag, into like 4.3, 4.4 volt territory. And that is still considered safe because the actual idle voltage level of that cell, when it's at resting voltage, it is still well below 4.2 volts. So all those things. Um, also, temperature, cell temperature tilt back. If your cells start getting hot, that's what we can now react to with the BMS tilt back. So all these are things that we were waiting for and we wanted to have it. And this is what the video is about. And unfortunately, Tony decided to just wing it and go his own way and completely ignore everything that we've been working on and just kind of do it himself using his software dude locked themselves in a room and figured some crazy mechanism out to give us BMS pushback. Like sort of the, yep, we got BMS pushback at home meme. And what we're getting out of that is unfortunately a completely useless implementation that not only is doing it wrong, but also at the wrong time. And it's just a complete disaster to be short. So let me just demonstrate what this is supposed to do. And I'm going to here show you in float control the uh, cell voltages. So 
Um, my battery is currently at, what was it, at 48%. And if we look at the long press on voltage, we can see the cell voltages, which is really nice to have in this with this new BMS. Um, and we can see the individual voltages or just see the summary, the lowest on the left, the highest on the right, and the average in the middle. So now, I'm going to go up this hill right here and because going uphill demands higher currents, higher currents make the voltage drop temporarily, we call that voltage sag, and that voltage sag causes my cells to dip somewhere below 3.3 volts. And what you see here is an under voltage alert. And this alert now would trigger BMS pushback. Luckily, the default configuration that the float wheel ADV2 ships with has it disabled. I don't know if it's just them screwing up or if it is intentional, but they enabled the PPM remote feature, but they set the maximum angle to zero degrees, which means that uh, you get pushback of zero degrees, which is to be no pushback. And the way they implemented it is they ran a dedicated PPM wire. So there is this PPM slash server port that most vests have. And they run a wire from the BMS to the controller and use basically the BMS as a remote and that remote would give you tilt back. And the crazy part is that it gives you the tilt back degrees that you have, the max degrees that you have configured. And so if you have configured like 20 degrees of tilt or whatever, some people do that for racing and so on um, to do crazy extreme stuff, then the BMS could give you 20 degrees of tilt. And, um, that really quickly if you keep the default speed as 25 degrees per second. So what happens is this. I have this video from somebody basically submitting a question on Facebook and wondering what was going on with the board, especially because the battery wasn't even low. It was at 40%. But SAG does this. And see, I have it again. All right, so what can you do about it? easiest is to just completely disable the remote feature and then that way you don't have to worry about it but some people do like their remotes and even though i am not a remote fan i do like having the option of just saying here i need it really quickly there is a big uphill coming and i need i know i need to raise my nose or if there's some crazy downhill so I want to have that option and as you can see I am able to do this so that I'm getting my tilt and yeah so I don't want to fully disable it. Now if you do want to keep your remote but you don't want to risk getting screwed by Tony's BMS then you basically have to cut that PPM wire and um, let me show you how to do that. Now let's try to disable BMS pushback by cutting this gray wire right here from that seven pin cable. Make sure you don't cut any others and don't necessarily rely on the color. I don't know if it's always going to be gray. So you want to pick the one that's labeled S over here is the second one. All right, I've plugged it back in. You can see the gray wire there next to the purple and the green, between the purple and green. That is the one that I have cut. And now finally, we basically have this smart BMS and we have cell level data, we have cell temperatures, but we're not taking advantage of it. So, to really make your ride safer based on that smart BMS, you want to 
enable BMS tilt back and in order to do that you need two things first you need a custom refloat package that has that feature included so we do have one available it's still in development but if you want a preview I can uh, provide access to it and um, then once you have that custom package you go into motor config general BMS and in here first make sure these checkboxes are not checked those will give you nose dives if there's any issue reported by the BMS we don't want that that's for e-skate and e-bikes and so on and here we got the temperature limits you can set them basically with temperature limits start 45 celsius if your cells get close to that you will start getting tilt back same with voltage minimum limit start and voltage maximum limit start so basically I have set it to 2.8 volts for minimum and 4.3 for maximum and you want to have it fairly extreme because the normal tilt back already has you covered for low battery situations in general so you want to make it so that the um, BMS based tilt back only kicks in if there truly is a cell that is that is out of line so 2.8 or even 2.7 would be good voltages for that and uh, but now to demonstrate it I'm going to set the limit to 3.3 because my battery is fairly low right now and so it should be easy to trigger 3.3 per cell and I hit right and then I'll show you what that looks like disconnect here go back into float control all right, so currently my cell voltage is around 3.46, but as soon as I go up this hill over here, it should dip to below 3.3. And you will also see that I'm still getting those BMS alerts, but those can be disabled. Now, uh, float control lets you disable each one of them individually. So let's go and ride up a little faster. All right, you hear that? That's my haptic buzz. And I also get tilt back. So now I know that there is a BMS alert and it does it in a more controlled fashion and you can fully control what your tilt backs look like. So you can use your normal refloat settings to adjust the behavior and all of the haptic stuff is also included in here so that's the controlled behavior that you want giving you that safety that you get from having cell level monitoring and uh, temperature monitoring and yeah here we can individually disable that because that alert really is annoying so here we have float wheel bms alerts you can say don't allow low voltage alerts and then that way those will not happen anymore but now my tilt back should still be happening By the way, this under voltage error coming from the BMS will disappear as soon as all your cells are above 3.5. So that gets cleared. It's completely stupid logic. 3.5 volts. I don't even know what they were thinking. Um, this has this is not at all applicable to lithium-ion batteries that we're using. So. So let me go change the pushbacks and haptic back to a normal level so that I can ride home. 
um, that's in motor config. Yeah, so 2.8 volts. Actually, I like 2.7 for that. And for cell maximum, I'm going to say 4.4. And it doesn't really matter anyway. But let me remind you about these checkboxes. Make sure you don't have any of them checked. So, all right, now we have that set and we can ride home knowing that if there is any kind of BMS based exception for a single cell, now I have haptic buzz alerting me. So I have that added safety of cell level monitoring combined with pushbacks and haptic buzz. Just the way it should be out in stupid PPM signal trying to do that for me. And if Tony had just been in communication with us about all that, he would have known that he didn't need to spend any time doing this stupid PPM signal and he could have saved himself a wire in the harness and uh, used it potentially for something more useful. Like for example, he could have put an extra temperature sensor into the front pack that he has. Because right now, yes, we have two temperature sensors in the rear, but we have no idea how warm the cells in the front are getting. That would have been a good use of that extra wire, for example. Anyway, I hope this has been useful. Talk to you guys soon.